tubes is difficult at best. There's lots of problems just naturally with having a round glass surface with tiny ants and eggs. So part of Tar Heel Ants, the beginning especially, we wanted to replace test tubes and uh, we came up with various designs of formicaria to help raise ants and we wanted to see exciting ant colonies growing. So we came up with various designs, mini hearths, atom nests, uh, even smaller ones, taluses, um, this is an inception chamber. <laughs>
insert goes in first and then you push the feeder in all the way till it hooks and stops and then you mark those two the, two the length of the two inside with some sort of marker or pin and then you fill it up with water to that line and again tilt just slightly tilt the test tube as you're pushing down the cotton with the larger end of you know, whatever you're using but I like a chopstick it works really well and then you want to push it flat as flat as you can and then insert the two pieces just smoothing out the cotton there insert the two pieces in and you're ready to go you really you, of course you're going to take the feeder out before you uh, put the cotton in and move your colony in There are many methods of moving ants from one test tube to another. So, and that's what you have to do in most cases with these uh, Genesis inserts, at least for most of us who already have colonies and want to move a colony into something better, a different test tube. So um, the first way that I've traditionally used is what you see here. I, I take some piece, some tape, of course, this is painter's tape. Uh, it just is nice because it doesn't have a tacky surface when it's removed. It doesn't have that tacky feel after uh, it comes off the glass. So you just wrap it around, get a nice seal after connecting the two test tubes. And from that point, it's a waiting game. Uh, you can do some stuff to help the ants um, along, like tapping on the glass, shining some light on the area there, and make the other place you want them to move dark. Um, so, I mean, that's just a different way of... Uh, of doing it than what I'm going to show you here primarily. So this is what works for me um, and I kind of changed my method a little bit when I have ants that actually have eggs but the ants that you're seeing here being moved in they do not have eggs uh, other than this colony right here. This is a carpenter ant colony, Camponotus chromaides. They have eggs because they overwinter with eggs during diapause and um, you know they have such large eggs that it's totally okay here and actually these are uh, larvae so they're gonna be really easy to see and they're gonna usually be in the workers mouths anyway but moving them in uh, this is basically just dumping them in and kind of banging on the test tube until the ants move and uh, it's it's a little bit of a, a learning curve with this uh, you're going to have some escape ants occasionally, but if you need to move them quickly from one test tube to another, there really is not a better way to do it than this, especially when you can do it. Uh, and this is not going to be something you want to do with small ants, tiny ants, ants that sting, and it's just going to be something that's situational. So the reason I'm doing it here in this video and I'm showing you is because this is something that we had to do with all the colonies you see in this video here. Um, we felt like that some of them were to the point where they didn't have any water, the mold was too bad, uh, so we wanted to move them all at the same time. They did not have any eggs because they're in diapause right now. These are Formica subsericea mainly that we're doing this with. That's Formica queen you see there crawling around. So whenever you have a single queen, there's no reason to try to dump her from one to another by pushing them together you just dump her onto a towel and then let her walk in to the test tube so these ants are really good about walking into the test tubes when you put the test tube down right in front of them so um, that's that's something just to keep in mind um, you know again it's just a you're not you're not banging the glass that is what we're, what you're not doing you're banging your hand that's holding the glass um, you can do this a hundred ways, uh, but and I'm sure each of you who, who try this will have a different way you want to do it. Um, I'm, see, I'm banging my finger there, and that's causing the, the ants to fall into the test tube below. You know, if, if, you're, if you're a younger person or you, have, uh, you don't have maybe the best uh, faith in your own ability to do this, by all means, use the first method. Uh, just tape them together, secure them together, and uh, just be patient with them. Uh, generally, I've found that moving them from a empty test tube without the Genesis system 
uh, it goes pretty quickly. They like the feel of uh, some substrate under their um, under their bodies, and it goes pretty quickly. So what you see here, we are feeding these uh, these colonies that we moved. This system makes it a lot easier to feed. You keep clean test tubes, uh, which also means that your cotton is not going to mold as quickly. Uh, they're not going to be putting uh, smearing food on the cotton or putting hopefully putting pieces of stuff on the cotton as frequently. It's going to be a lot easier to clean. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, sticky residue getting on the inside of your test tubes. This is pieces of um, mealworms. We cut them up into thirds and quarters. Uh, the, the mealworms we use are about an inch long, uh, maybe a little bit longer. And we cut them up. Usually we don't use the heads. Uh, the inserts, you know, with these ants particularly, and everybody's, you know, no, depending on where you live, what kind of ants you're using, everybody's going to have a different experience with how their ants react to removing the cotton from their test tube. So when you're pushing the cotton in to secure the feeder, I, I push it up at an angle. So you're, you're pushing it in, of course, into the test tube, but you're kind of pushing it up at an angle. This will help keep the test tube feeder flat as you're pushing it in. So let's talk about the choice of feeding uh, your ants and test tubes. Here you see we're using an organic honey. It is not diluted with water. Um, these are larger ants and I've got experience feeding them this honey like this, so it works good. Uh, sometimes when they are in need of uh, some water as well, I will mix it with honey. Uh, you just uh, put the honey and a little bit of water, about the same amounts, stir it together with the end of a chopstick or something like that. You're just giving them the right amount. You don't want to give them too much. Uh, if you're going to err on one side or the other, go small, and then that way you can feed them more later. Uh, you definitely don't want to get too goopy with your feeding. The idea here is to utilize these to keep your test tubes clean. So using small amounts that don't overflow into the test tube is a very, very good recommendation. Um, it'll help you uh, maintain the interior uh, of your test tube much, much better, much for much more longevity. So you don't have to change them as frequently. We also use uh, the target lens and juice that we sell on our website. We also use that when feeding them. Um, you can feed them, you know, anything that you're used to feeding them. You just have to cut it up into a small enough piece. So if you're sitting there wondering why are we showing you the same thing over and over, I just want to show people what happens when you actually take the cotton out and when you're inserting the feeder, how these ants react. Your ants may react totally different. I would expect if I was keeping a lot of fire ants, for example, Solenopsis invicta, that as soon as I opened the test tube and took the cotton out and started inserting a feeder, they're going to go on attack mode. So uh, if, if you do have a Solenopsis invicta or ant, other ants that sting, uh, you may have to adopt these methods to uh, better suit your uh, ants and uh, be, be being safe. And of course, you don't want to get stung by ants and you don't want to hurt the ants because you're afraid of them. Thank you.